Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are hitting our stride. We are on day three of ProVision Hacks, getting it done with faith, ingenuity, and favor. But what about the money? That is what I'm talking about today. I give five quick tips to help accelerate, cultivate, and position yourself to receive. Now, I came up with this ebook. I actually, uh, I think, posted it at the beginning of 2017, and I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to kind of talk it out, even though, you know, it's several months later, we're all the way in November, but that's okay. I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to hear this in podcast form so that you can begin to start those businesses, start those ministries and use what you have before, you know, you feel like, oh God, I don't have what I need to get it done. I want you to realize that you are capable and you have everything you need to get God's provision for the vision that he has given you for your life. Now, in essence, this series is about how to access the provision. This is a tool for you to kind of figure out, I guess, the process of this whole thing. Because again, when you feel like God is giving you something and you really don't know which way is up, it is very hard for somebody to tell you, oh, just do it. And you really don't have any idea on how to do it. Now, each tip for each day, it has a scripture to inspire impact and action. I'm all about impact and action. When I started these You know, months ago, it was always about impact and action, okay? And I think that it is so important to make sure that we set ourselves up to win, y'all. That's what these series are all about, especially the Hack series. It's always about setting yourself up to win because you're a winner. Why do I know you're a winner? You're a king's kid. Hey, comes with the territory. You're born a winner. Straight up. You were born a champion. In the kingdom of God, you were. You know, so... That's why I just take it from that platform and that vantage point, and I try to build off of that. Now, each one of the series comes with an ebook, so I want you to make sure you hit the link below this podcast, and I want you to download the Provisions ebook. Okay, I get really good feedback on those who do download it. You know, I've gotten pictures from people. Just bless my soul of them. You know, uh, taking pictures of them taking notes and listening to the podcast. Man, it just made me feel amazing. And again, it's all to the glory of God. It's nothing for me, but it really did touch me because I know when God was sharing, hey, Robin, I want you to do this and that, I actually heard from him and it was confirmation from the responses of the people who it's actually helped. Now, guys, I know it's not for everybody. I'm not naive to that information, but it does not stop me from doing what God is telling me to do. So I want to encourage you. I don't want you to not do something that God is telling you to do because you think people are not going to like it. You think you make the post and you only get one like. Maybe that's the one person who needed it. I'm going to give y'all a quick testimony for somebody. And this was this was really powerful. And I just feel led to interject and say this in this series. A young lady sent me a DM and she told me that I forgot which one it was. I don't know. I'm not going to make nothing up. But she basically told me that something that I shared or posted, it talked her off the ledge. And y'all know what I mean by that. And that just had me in tears. And when I when I remember what it was, it hardly got no love, whatever it was. It wasn't a lot of likes or people comment or nothing. But she said it was for her. And I stopped her from doing it. I helped, well, I guess she said I stopped her from doing something she would have regretted. She was in a season in her life where she felt, wor- felt worthless and she felt like something she did she couldn't come back from. So, y'all, this is why I say to you, you don't know who you're helping. You know, please do not get caught up in the shiny things and the bells and whistles. Because people could be under your post. People could be in your face saying you're so awesome. You're so great. You do so wonderful. And God might not even be in that. You want to make sure that what you're doing is lining up with the Father. Because the enemy um, the enemy can send the world to give you praise. He can make you think everything you're doing is about, you know, you know everything is on the right path. But really and truly, you stop talking about God. You're not implementing the things he told you. you. You just throw him on it. Oh, yeah, pray. Make sure you pray. Oh, yeah, God is good. But you're really not living for the Father. You're really lukewarm. And that is what this podcast is about. Because, y'all, it helps me, too. 
I have my shortcomings. I, I mess up with this thing. And that's why I feel like we don't have enough people helping us. I'm going to tell y'all, I got my life from this the other day. Kirk Franklin said this, and it just touched my soul. He said, millennials are leaving the church because they were too bi- the church people were too busy showing them the scriptures instead of showing them their scars. That's a word. Ooh, it's a word, huh? That's a word right there. And that's why whatever it is God is telling you to do, if you are listening to Provision Hacks because you're trying to access what you need to get the vision done, to get the business done, the ministry done, whatever it is he's telling you, don't be afraid of your scars. Your scars are a part of what he's called you to do. So don't let the enemy be in your ear talking about shame on you. That's Satan. That's not the Lord. You cannot be embarrassed by what you've gone through. Some of y'all, you're going to have to write that thing and put it in a book. Some of you are going to have to start a TV show. You're going to have to start a tour. You're going to have to do a cooking show, a cooking class, a, a cookbook. Um, go sing for somebody, design clothes for somebody, do somebody. Hey, listen, it don't matter what it is. But as long as God is in it, he's telling you to do it. Then you go ahead and you do it. Don't you let a devil in hell stop you. Don't let... Oh, I don't have any money in my bank account. I don't have money to do this. How am I going to do this This is if uh, this is from God? Don't let none of that foolishness stop you. That's what the enemy wants to do. He is sent to give you roadblocks, guys. That's why I'm like, yo, I'm coming here to move the roadblocks. Because a lot of times the roadblocks, we just yield to the enemy, not realizing that we're giving him control when we just sit down and do nothing. If you're just sitting down, not researching, not handling your business, you basically just told the enemy, well, come on, partner, you can do whatever you got to do. You dig? Do whatever it is you want to do because I'm not going to use what God has given me so that I can be in position to access the provision. I'm not even handling my business. So come on, enemy. You can go ahead while I'm wasting time, not doing nothing. You can go ahead and do it while I'm complaining to my friends. I'm so sad. I'm mad at God. You know, all of that time we do that kind of stuff, the enemy just posts up. He's like, all right. You know, he'll get his little goons together and they just come on and they're like, hey, you know, get over there. You heard me. Take all of them. Take all of them. Take all their little stuff. They're over there praying and they in their Bible, but they don't want to do the work. So we're going to go and we're going to do the work for them. We're going to go ahead and manipulate and screw it up for them. Then he's looking at the other people that's like, oh, they tell other people to pray for them and they roll off of other people's prayers, but they don't really have a prayer life. They're not praying for themselves. They want everybody else to pray for them. So you know what? We're going to take care of them. Because those people's prayers are cool, but guess what? They're not even believing it. They just want other people's prayers to get them through. And trust me, many times, y'all, when we're not praying, other people's prayers get us through. But when the enemy realizes how powerful your prayers are and the lack thereof, he's going to use that to his advantage. So that's why in my hack series, I always add the last bonus tip, a bonus tip, which is the same every day in addition to the main tip of the day. And I always give a scripture. So... Without further ado, I'm going to jump in and we're going to start right quick with housekeeping. Make sure if you want to post anything on social media, do hashtags, provision hacks, and live your authentic purpose. And we are going to jump in with today's scripture. Now, every day, this entire series is based on one scripture, and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. That's because, y'all, a lot of us know that we have God-given visions, but it will require labor. It will, requ- it will require watering and planting, and we will not be able to access it if we don't do those things. So that is the same scripture I read every day, but today is tip three, and this is actually my favorite tip. Today says, what are you sowing? What's in your hand? Now that is based off of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Okay. So here we go with seed time and harvest. Here we go with what are you sowing? What is in your hand? Okay. Ask yourself. If you really said, okay, God, what am I doing right now in my life to sow into somebody so into something because y'all listen seed is not always monetary seed comes in many forms 
The most successful people in the world will often share stories of how they worked for other people's companies and helped to build their dreams, either before or while cultivating their own. Now, let me put a pause right there. I want to let's I'm about to go in right here. Let's elaborate. So one of the things that I find disheartening, you know, in this day and age is that when we look at people blowing up in social media, and I always have to talk about social media because that's the time we're in where this is not an archaic time we're in. We're in a very forward moving, forward thinking time. OK, speaking of, I am actually going to be starting a program for coding, teaching girls and boys how to code. Because that's not something that I'm well versed in, but I know it's the wave of the future. And if we don't start learning how to do these things on the back end, guess what? We're not going to see what it is that God is trying to show us on a major level. God is using small things right now to give us access to greater things later. Okay? So with that being said, I find that a lot of people don't want to do the hard work. And if you listen to anything I talk about, I talk about doing smart work. You know why I talk about doing smart work? Because I bust my tail doing hard work. And I know sometimes things are going to come up in life and I have to work hard. But when you get to a certain place in God, the Lord is like, listen, if you learn how to just let it flow with me, if you just learn how to surrender with me, child, surrender, surrender everything to me, your work is not going to feel so hard. I'll do the hard work. I want you to do the smart work. I want you to be wise. I want you to practice wisdom. I want you to implement your discernment. And then you'll begin to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, which I like to talk about all the time. Because we are living. We are human beings. God is not taking us home if we listen to this right now. So we still have to figure out what this is God is trying to show us so that we can be in position. So that you can get the provision for the vision he has given you. And it saddens me because people don't want to work. You see a person has a ministry. You see a person has a business. You see they need help. You know you need experience. But you have too much pride, too much ego to say, hey, can I help you with something? You know, hey, I know you're working on this. Uh, you know, can I do, you know, I could take care of your emails for you. Or do you need an intern or whatever? Because this day and age, they're not doing that because... The way the world is set up, it's, well, you can be an overnight success. You can buy followers. You know, you could easily just get a big break and be in, in, in front of a billion people. You know, so people are forgetting that it's going to crumble. Because this is what I'm seeing now, too. A lot of people who rose to fame and they skip that step, they lose everything. And they don't know what to do because they kind of just jumped in. They didn't even think about what they were sewing because for, for, you know, for some people, they may have done one little quirky, funny thing and then it catapults them into success. Now let's not get it twisted. Cause the one thing I'm not is a hater. I want a person to win. I want anybody to win, but this is my thing. Many times God will do an impossible, suddenly gargantuan miracle blessing for us. That is unheard of. And it's something that we could have never written in the books for ourselves. So many people have catapulted to fame because that's something God blessed them with. You know, the, the enemy don't always do that. Sometimes God will accelerate a person and put them on the platform. But what he will also do is give you the wisdom and the wherewithal to still study and to still learn. I'm going to tell you, I am so impressed when I see millionaires, multimillionaires and famous people go back to school. I am so impressed when I see them go backwards, so to speak, by the world standards, and they go in and they learn the groundwork. They go learn the groundwork of what it looks like. They go and try to figure out what it is, even though they have millions of dollars, and they can take those millions of dollars, and they can get somebody to do whatever it is that they need, but they go back and they learn it. Now, another thing, like the opposite side of that is this. A lot of times people see very successful, wealthy people, famous people, whatever you want to call it, and whatever arena because they may not be famous by the world standards but they be, they may have um a lot of success a lot of accolades and things like that if you talk to those people for the most part i'm not talking about the the special people who just happen upon a break but when you talk to people you will find out that it took years and years and years and what appears to be an overnight success is not an overnight success 
you know, they may have had a vision from God when they were 10 and they may not see it come together till they're 40 years old. They don't really get the fullness of God will give them provision along the way, but they don't really reach the pinnacle and the top level of that thing until years later because they're working toward it. That's why I ask, what are you doing? Like, what do you have that can, can, what do you have in your hand that you can sow? Cause these people, they've been sowing the whole time. That's what I was doing. And I'm still doing it. Cause you have to, you have to make sure that you're taking care of the groundwork. You cannot access the provision that God has given you for a vision unless you are making yourself aware of what it's going to take to see that vision come to pass. And that is going to require some kind of work. You are going to have to sow some energy into something. So I give kudos to those who get their 10,000 hours. And I believe it was Malcolm Gladwell who coined that term of uh, 10,000 hours. I think it was him. Uh, if I'm wrong, y'all check me and email me. But I think that it was Malcolm Gladwell. But you know that working those 10,000 hours, those are the things that people can't see. People don't know, you know, that when everybody else is out and, ha you know, having a good time, you can be at your house and just on your computer working or you could be writing your book or, you know, in a gap and in the trenches praying for somebody else. You could just be doing so many things behind the scenes that people don't know and you're really putting in the work. I can tell you at least five different businesses that I have just sewn into for free. And I just did the hard work. I interned, I assisted, I helped. I've done so many things and I continue to do that when God calls me to and leads me to because when you sew into other people's businesses, it's a game changer. Not only do you understand, you know, your likes and dislikes, you may even discover you don't want to do that thing or you may even discover that something you thought God told you to do was not from him. And then he may give you the, he may give you a redirect through that experience, but just showing him that you believe him enough to just go ahead and step out on faith and try to work through that thing that pleases God. Faith without works is dead. So him being able to do that, it's a game changer. You know, him, him, him being able to say, Hey, listen, I'm going to catapult you because I see what you're doing for somebody else. I'm going to bless that in you. Okay. Now I came up with three things. For tip three, and I call it the three B's of sewing. Number one is the basics. Okay. This is going to get you closer to the fulfillment of your vision. Okay. Again, make sure you get the ebook because I don't, I'm not going to say all the details on here. You're going to have to download it to get the rest. But let's break them down. Number one, the B, the first B is basics. Sew the basics. Put out what you know. You can do effortlessly first and consistently. When God says, okay, listen, son, daughter, this is what I want you to do. I want you to open a bakery. You're like, I don't even know how to cook, much less bake. What? I don't even know how to do that. And then you start stressing out. Well, go to the basics. What do you know? Start with what you know. You might say, well, I don't even know how to, I don't even know my way around the kitchen. I really know how to fix cars. I, I just know how to fix cars. God is like, okay, well, go fix a car tomorrow like you do every day. Go fix a car. Okay, so a lady comes in. She needs you to fix her car. And while you're fixing it, she starts talking. She's like, oh, man, I have just make these pies. And, man, I just sold out. And he starts saying, well, wait a minute. You, you make pies? He takes one of the pies. Oh, my God, this is incredible. He realizes this woman needs a place to sell her pies. She has no desire to have a bakery, but she don't mind baking the pies. Guess what? The Lord just said, this is your bakery. These are the pies that's going to go in your bakery. And guess why? Because you started with the basics. You started with what you did know. That's why I try to tell people is not to oversimplify everything, but the key to what we want is right there with what we have. God has given me visions on things, guys. I had no desire to do. None. I didn't even have no wisdom on it, no knowledge of it. I had to go back and learn how to do it. Y'all want to know one thing I did that with? The podcast. I mean, I'll be a pro at this thing sooner than later because now I'm learning all that I can learn. I'm really doing it the way God was telling me to do it. And it's a podcast. I'm not, I'm not creating, you know, something that, you know, whatever, I guess, whatever somebody may think is admirable. This is just a vehicle he told me to work in this season. And it may not be much to anybody else, but God told me to do it. So it's everything to me. 
Because I want to please him. I want to please my father and be about his business. And that means I have to be obedient and do these kinds of things to make sure that you guys hear what you need to hear. And you'll hear this and then you'll start your podcast. So you go and do the thing that you need to do. But you're going to get closer to that provision that it is that God is trying to get, get to you so that the vision can come to pass. Now, number two, the second B is behavior. Y'all, I cannot stress this enough. So in behavior, many people get a big deal, a big break, or a life-changing connection because they exhibited exemplary behavior. Straight up. Power connection. How you getting down. Somebody just watching what you do. You may be minding your business in a room full of people, but the way you carrying yourself, the way you are kind, the way you are just, you, just your actions alone. Somebody can be looking at you and they say, you know what? I'm about to bless her. I'm about to bless him. So in behavior. Again, I told y'all, y'all, if you're not familiar, my hacks, oh, people are like, wow, I never thought about that. Because y'all, I didn't think about it either until God gave me the, 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 the information and gave me the wisdom on it. But it's true. Once you sow in the basics and you just start with what you have, even if what he told you is the opposite of your skill set, and then you sow in behavior... You are going to get those wheels turning and I promise you, you're going to start getting connected with the people that you need to be connected with to see this thing come to pass. I can promise you that. Okay. I'll give you an example of that real quick. Probably maybe about a decade ago, I was in the presence of a young lady and I was just like, really, I just had a really bad attitude for some reason. I don't know what it was, but I just had this really bad attitude. Now, ordinarily, I'm an optimistic person and I'm a lot different now than how I used to be. But I just had a little stank attitude. I'll admit that and I ask God to forgive me. All of that's what it is. That's why I want to share it with you because some of you maybe can identify with this. Well, it was, a, again, a young lady was nice and then all of a sudden, you know, I didn't see anymore. And not, she was, it wasn't even like a, a, a personal friend or anything like that. But whatever it was that was going on, I was aggravated and annoyed by the person that brought her there, I believe. And so as a result, I just had a stank attitude. So it just never crossed my mind then that I may have to cross this girl's path again, okay? Well, how about years later when I'm saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm then repenting for all my sins, and the Lord's showing me people, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was so stupid. Why did I do this with this girl? In fact, it was probably longer than 10 years ago. I can't remember, but I'm going to say this to you. I probably cut off my nose to spite my face in that situation. And I found out what this, this girl is extremely successful now, but the things that she's doing now is, stu is similar to stuff that I was doing, you know, a while ago. And I know if I would have maintained a relationship with her, I would have had a better attitude instead of just acting like an idiot. That probably could have been a great connection and it could have been a blessing that I didn't block. That's why I told y'all, you got to show people like, Kurt Franklin says, you have to show people your scars. You don't just throw scripture in their face. You have to show people where you were inadequate, where you messed up. Because once God, God forgives you, you throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. He throws it there. But then you can help other people. So if you're feeling like, you know, if people keep telling you you have a bad attitude or you know you had a bad day and you were just ugly that day to everybody, go and clean that up. Ask God for forgiveness because you want to sow in good behavior. If you sow in good behavior, you are sowing yourself into a blessing. And you will need that in order to access your provision. So once you take care of that, just be prepared for a new flow. Because once you clean that kind of mess up, God is able to bless you in a new way. So I want to encourage somebody with that. You know, it's a lesson that I learned in life. And even though I was way younger, it's something that I never forgot. Because you never want to do something that can keep you from accessing the provision that God has for you. And the last B is barter. So by bartering, bartering is to exchange goods or services for other goods or services without using money. A lot of you are in need of things for your vision and your business, and you're saying you don't have the money to do it, but you have something in your hand. That's what today is about. What are you sowing? What's in your hand? Some of you have something in your hand that somebody needs, a colleague, or maybe somebody you even see on social media. You may look at it thing. You say, you know what? Well, I do graphic design. You know, she got some followers, but maybe if I, I could probably up the ante on how her memes look and maybe help her out with that. And you know what? 
she has this and I really need this, but it's a, it's an expensive service. I don't really know. I don't have the money to pay for that. Well, that's when you hit them up on the barter and you say, Hey, listen, I realize, you know, you may need help with this. Or let's say they may even post it and say, Hey, I need somebody to do this and that for me. And they might've been willing to pay, but you can say, Hey, can we barter? I can give you this thing that you need, but I need this from you. Right now, your bartering service is more valuable than your money. I would I would prefer if you just gave me your skill as opposed to your money because that is going to give me what I need to see what I need done over here, just like you're giving them what they need to get what they done in their business or their vision, their purpose, ministry, whatever it may be. So that was today. What are you sowing? What's in your hand? The three B's of sowing, basics, behavior, and bartering. All right. Every day, I always give you guys this extra special tip, and that is to download the YouVersion Bible app. If you are not familiar with it, it is a it is an app, and it, it plays the Bible. Different languages, different versions, all of these different things that you may need so that you can hear the Bible for yourself. I know that you are busy. It's humdrum sometimes. It seems boring. I know people just read the Bible just to go to sleep. I used to do that back in the day. I knew if I opened my Bible, I'd be asleep 20, minutes, 20 seconds later. You know, so for those of you who really want to make sure that, hey, I heard from God on this vision. I know he's going to give me the provision, but I know that my faith needs to be stirred up because I'm feeling like I don't have the money. I feel like this vision is bigger than me. I want you to start listening to your word. Listen to it in your car. Listen to it while you're working out. Listen to it while you're cooking. You can just pick if you want to do that. Now, again, your good old fashioned Bible where you can turn the pages and smell the pages that is what you want to have with you at all times. Definitely be able to use that. But your Bible app is good for this day and age because we can still keep the word of God on us. We can be traveling, doing whatever we need to do. We always have headphones in. You can plug them in and listen to the word for a minute. So with that being said, I hope that today blessed you guys. Again, this was day three. And this is what are you sowing? What's in your hand? The three B's of sowing basics, behavior, and bartering make sure you guys hit the link below this podcast so that you can download the free resource to go with this series and if you want to catch up on all of them if you go to the inspiration specialist.life you can access all of my free resources and you can get caught up if you're just finding out about my podcast and you know just the different things that I do to provide inspiration for you guys. This is something that I love to do. This is what I'm called to do. I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. And so these particular series, these hack series, are helping you to access clever knowledge. That is the the, the acronym I chose for this this, uh, hack series that I do because I want you guys to know that Everything is just not always in the tangible. It's not always, I got to have this money. I got to have this. I got to have that. A lot of times God is trying to come another way, y'all. He's trying to bless us a whole different way. And I just don't want you to miss it. So make sure you guys are going to join me tomorrow for day four, which is thinking out of the box. And if you did not catch up with the prior days, day one was level up, invest in you and your time. Day two was give your best even if it's your all. And again, we will pick back up tomorrow with day four. So thank you guys again. Make sure you share, you like it, and you pass it on. I am Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at imwiredtoinspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.